Oh, so now uh, start to the seminar. Uh, I, I'm, my name is Shinwa Samoto uh, from Saitama University, Associate Professor. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, to uh, held this uh, uh, great seminar, uh, JSC and the Kassesa University Online Joint Seminar. So uh, in this seminar, we have the uh, six uh, presentation, and then I would like you to uh, join the uh, discussion positivity and the exchange knowledge uh, fruit, fruitful discussion will be achieved. So, uh, and also I would like to introduce my uh, colleague co-moderator, Dr. Chakrapan. Could you please introduce? Hi, uh, I'm Chakapan Tirta from Kaseisa University. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, I would like to start the seminar. And then firstly, I would like uh, Dr. Yoshinobu Oshima to give the opening speech. Could you please uh, give us a speech? Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. I am Oshima. Uh, chairperson of the Subcommittee of International Affairs in the Concrete Committee, JCE. Uh, it is uh, my great pleasure to welcome you all to the joint seminar, uh, Current Situation and Maintenance Technologies for Concrete Structures Subject to Crowded Attack uh, in Thailand and J Japan. Uh, this seminar is a kind of uh, a new uh, joint seminar organized by JCE. And this year, the Faculty of Engineering at Kasesad University uh, kindly accepted our offer to be one of the co uh, sponsors. And actually, uh, we really wanted to hold uh, the live seminar in Thailand uh, to meet you uh, face to face. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, this seminar has to be online uh, due to a uh, worldwide disease, uh, COVID-19. Um, before uh, moving on uh, with this program, I'd like to briefly review uh, the maintenance history of the concrete structures in Japan. A few decades ago, uh, in Japan, uh, we said uh, concrete structures were permanent structures uh, without any maintenance. Uh, but many defects, such as steel corrosion in concrete or uh, material deteriorations like uh, ASR, have been found uh, in uh, concrete uh, in concrete structures in 1990s. And uh, chloride attack uh, is one of the reasons for these defects. And since then, uh, how to stop the chloride attack has, has been a very important issue in Japan. But the uh, solution is not so simple. In the in 1990s, we recognized the quality control during construction is very important to increase the reliability of concrete. In 2012, a very shocking accident happened in the tunnel structures in Japan. A concrete ceiling in the tunnel fell over a hundred meters. This accident is a, a turning point to change our maintenance policy in Japan. Uh, finally, uh, we realized that uh, concrete structures should be properly controlled in design process, construction process, and maintenance process as well. Uh, in order to enhance the reliability of concrete structures, uh, JSCE provides standard specifications, not only design, but also in construction and maintenance. Particularly, maintenance specification contain our recent knowledge about the concrete deterioration, inspection, and counteractions against several defects, including chloride attack. Please check our web website to find English version specifications. They are free to download. Okay, uh, well, uh, let's go back to the chloride attack. So deterioration, Due to crowded attack, it's very complicated, and there are various cases in practice. Thus, it is uh, very important to know the best practice about uh, counteractions against crowded attack. So today, uh, you will hear from an exceptional lineup of the speakers, the researchers, administrators of highways, engineers who are uh, the experts in this field. So there are a lot of experience about the maintenance technologies. I really appreciate the speakers who expand their uh, own experience and knowledge to the audience. 
Uh, finally, uh, I hope that uh, this seminar will open up the opportunity to exchange our knowledge and obtain a strong tie between two countries, Japan and Thai, despite COVID-19. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, probably uh, in the Japan, Thailand, we have exchanged many uh, important uh, discussion and uh, information. Then hopefully we have the uh, very durable uh, concrete uh, for the future, also in Japan, uh, in Thailand. Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to move to the uh, technical section and then we have two session. Uh, first session, uh, we will have two presentation from one from Japan, one from Thailand. So firstly, I would like to introduce Dr. Kentaro Koike. Uh, uh, Dr. Kentaro Koike now uh, assistant professor at Kagoshima University and then after working at the Portland Pali Airport uh, Research Institute, he obtained the degree, all of degree from the Kagoshima University and then come back to the Kagoshima. And then his uh, major is mainly of course, concrete engineering and durability issue. And also now he uh, interested in the water movement. It is also very important for uh, uh, corrosion and also chloride uh, ingress. Uh, he uh, has so many uh, technical paper related to the water movement and uh, chloride ion penetration. And he got some awards as shown here. So uh, I would like to, uh, I would like uh, Dr. Kento Poike to present the pre presentation. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to uh, inform one important matter. Yamada Sensei, Choko no Shome Pimanai Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, Actually, uh, when you listen to the, this uh, seminar, you can get some certificate to take the, this seminar. So uh, this information will be given uh, from chat from the uh, Dr. Uh, Yuta Yamada. So please check the uh, uh, chat if you want to get the certificate to take the this course. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Koike, could you start? Okay, uh, can you see this presentation screen? Yes. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for introducing me, Dr. Asmoto. Uh, I am Kentaro Koike from Kagoshima University in Japan. Today, uh, I talk about uh, durability and it enhancing method in port and harbor concrete facilities. This is contents of my presentation. Today, I talk about deterioration of concrete, mechanism of steel corrosion in concrete, how to repair the deteriorated concrete, and how to enhance the durability of concrete structures. Okay, I'll explain characteristics of deterioration of concrete structures and the marine environment. In a pier superstructure, steel corrosion due to chloride ion in seawater is the major cause of deterioration. Corrosion of steel is easy to occur due to the supply of seawater and oxygen, like this. These pictures are typical examples of deterioration of members at pier superstructure due to corrosion of steel in concrete. Left picture shows deterioration of RC beam. There are cracks, delamination, and sporing uh, occurred at concrete member due to corrosion. Also, right picture shows deterioration of RC slab. The sporing of concrete is occurred same as RC beam. On the other hand, in the case of caisson, Corrosion of steel is hard to progress 
due to the less supply of oxygen enter the submerged zone. Here, deterioration of concrete itself is not so severe and the marine environment. From now, I'll explain mechanism of steel corrosion in concrete due to chloride ion. Before explaining corrosion mechanism, I'll introduce an easy example. This picture is an example of the clear effect of concrete cover on deterioration due to chloride ion. This is a cross section of RC slab involved after 30 years in the same splash environment. In the case of 30 mm cover, severe corrosion was observed. On the other hand, in the case of 80 mm cover, only slight corrosion was observed. Why? The answer is, the larger the concrete cover, the harder it is for chloride ions to reach rebar in concrete. This figure is example of the chloride ion profile that penetrated into concrete after 15 years. The concentration of chloride ion is higher around the concrete surface and lower inside the concrete. That is, the larger the concrete cover, the harder it is for chloride ions to reach the river in concrete. From now, I'll explain the mechanism of steel corrosion. This is chemical reaction formula of corrosion. Iron reacts with oxygen and water. Then, rust is formed. Here, in the sound concrete with high pH, no corrosion occurred due to existence of passive film formed on the steel surface. However, if many chloride ion penetrates around the steel surface, passive film is destroyed and corrosion initiates. And then, cracks and sporings occur due to expansion of rust. And next, uh, this is one of the main chapter in my presentation. Uh, I'll explain how to repair destroyed concrete structures due to chloride attack. In this chapter, I explain general repair methods of port concrete structures with actual examples. This slide shows deteriorated RC beam in the upper deck of wharf and the marine environment. You can see cover concrete was spoiled off due to expansion of corrosion products on the surface of steel bars. In this case, how do we repair? In this case, cross-sectional repair method is applicable. New materials, such as no shrinkage mortar, is filled after removing the deteriorated part. This work is conducted on, on the scale folding. This space uh, is very narrow, therefore, this work is not so efficient. Also, uh, in some cases, workable time is restricted by tidal table. This slide shows one example of procedure of cross-sectional repair. First phase, remove the cover concrete. Here, deteriorated concrete should be removed above upper steel. Also, some cases, some new steel bar were added for reinforcement. Second phase, set the form. Third phase, uh, place mortar for filling and finish. Also, this interface between new mortar and original concrete. 
From now, I'll show you several examples of cross-sectional repair. Case 1 is wolf structure. High water level is around here. Uh, this, this was constructed in 1968, repaired in 2000, after 32 years exposure. I also showed previous slide. In this deteriorated part, new mortar was filled after removing the deteriorated part, like this. Uh, case 2 is also wolf structure. I'm sorry for low resolution of image. Uh, high water level is around here. This structure was constructed in 1977, repaired in 1994, after 17 years exposure. In this deteriorated part, new mortar was filled after removing deteriorated part. In addition, surface coating was also applied to concrete surface to protect chloride ion in glass. This is case 3. High water level is around here. This structure was constructed in 1969, repaired in 1997 after 28 years exposure. In this deteriorated part, after cross-sectional repair, a carbon fiber reinforced plastic seed was attached for reinforcement because of large decrease of steel bars. And after, surface coating was applied on CFRP seed, like this. Here, I explain notes of cross-sectional repair method. After application of cross-sectional repair, the deterioration occurs in some cases, like this picture. Steel corrosion occurred uh, near the interface between uh, filling materials and original concrete. This type of corrosion is often called macrocell corrosion. This slide shows mechanism of macrocell corrosion near the interface after cross-sectional repair. Corrosion reaction consists of anodic reaction and cathodic reaction. In the repair material, cathodic reaction occurs because of little chloride ion in concrete. On the other hand, Anodic reaction occurs in the original concrete with high chloride ion content near the interface. Therefore, macrocell corrosion occurred near the interface. Also, this figure indicates we have to be careful for the selection of repairing part. Here, I'll explain how to prevent the deterioration after cross-sectional repair. First, uh, remove the original concrete with high chloride ion. Second, application of cathodic protection. This method is often applied to steel structures, such as steel pipe pipe. This method can control corrosion reaction by applying electric power. In the chemical reaction of iron, this direction is corrosion reaction. On the other hand, the opposite direction is not corrosion. Therefore, electron is supplied to the steel, corrosion reaction can be protected by using this electric circuit.
This slide shows image of cathodic protection titanium mesh type. Electric power is supplied uh, to the steel bar by using titanium mesh anode. This slide shows procedure of cathodic protection. First, remove the cover concrete. Next, set titanium ribbon mesh as a node. Third, set foam. Last, placing mortar for filling. And finish. This black cable is for applying the electric power. This slide shows one example of the effect of cathodic protection in our experiment. This picture shows uh, exposure site at Port and Airport Research Institute in Japan. These are spacements concrete beam with high chloride iron and these spacements were exposed seawater splashing for 10 years. Right picture shows corrosion condition of steel in concrete. Without cathodic protection, heavy corrosion was observed. On the other hand, with cathodic protection, only slight corrosion was observed. These results indicate cathodic protection is applicable to earthy structures. In the application of cathodic protection, we need monitoring and maintenance. We need to check the electric current flow to steel bar periodically. Because if there is no current flow, cathodic protection is not effective. This is the summary of this chapter. One repair method is cross-sectional repair method. This method is conducted by filling the new material, such as no shrinkage motor, after removing the deteriorated part. However, be careful for the selection of a repairing part because the deterioration sometimes occurs near the interface. Another one is cathodic protection. This method can control the corrosion reaction by applying the electric power. However, we have to check the current flow to steel bar periodically. Both methods are applicable for repair works, but not so easy and expensive. It is better to conduct some countermeasures at easier stage with slight deterioration. Okay, next topic is how to enhance the durability of concrete structures. The most important methods to enhance the durability of concrete structures are following four methods. First one is, needless to say, make a good concrete. This means that reduce the chloride ion diffusivity in concrete. To reduce the chloride ion diffusivity, increase the unit cement volume in concrete. That is, decrease the water to cement ratio or use the type of cement which, which has low chloride ion diffusivity such as blast furnace slug cement this is example of chloride ion profile in concrete with difference of cement types this figure shows result of uh, Portland cement, slag cement, and fryer cement. 
Chloride penetration depends on cement types. Especially, slag cement inhibits chloride ion penetration than Portland cement. For this reason, brass swana slag cement is generally used in port concrete structures in Japan. Next one is secure large cover depths. This is basic method but very effective. This picture shows cross-sectional of RC slab. For example, in the case of 80 mm cover, slight corrosion is occurred. On the other hand, in the case of 30 mm cover, heavy corrosion and sporing were occurred. This is due to the larger the concrete cover, the harder it is for chloride ion to reach the uh, reinforcing bar in concrete. Next one is prevent chloride ion ingress into concrete. Main method is surface coating. This is very effective in newly structured. However, it is need for repainting because of service life is 10 to 20 years. This slide shows one example of procedure of surface coating. The process has two steps. At the treatment, shaving the surface to enhance the adhesion between concrete and coating material. As the painting, painting by brush several times. And finish. This slide shows one example of the effect of surface coating by our experiment. Concrete specimen with five types surface coating was exposed for 15 years and the marine atmosphere environment. Here, this coating was applied before exposure. This figure shows chloride ion profile in concrete after 15 years. Without coating, there was much chloride ion in glass. On the other hand, with coating, there was no chloride ion in glass. These results indicate Surface coating is applicable to prevent chloride ion ingress at least for 15 years. Last one is use the high durable steel bars. One is epoxy coated bar. Steel surface is coated by epoxy resin. Therefore, it has high corrosion resistance. However, we need careful carrying and construction to avoid damage on the coating. Another one is stainless steel bar. Stainless steel has high corrosion resistance but expensive. However, we do not need careful carrying and construction to avoid damage on the surface. This slide shows one example of application of epoxy coated bar. This bridge was above the sea and 19 years old. Light picture shows epoxy coated bar after removing cover concrete. There are no collusion. Also, this slide shows one example of effect of stainless steel bar in our experiment. Cracked concrete specimen with steel bars was exposure in exposure site for five years. There is heavy corrosion on the normal carbon steel. On the other hand, there is no corrosion on the stainless steel. These results indicate stainless steel bar has high corrosion resistance. This is summary of this chapter. 
I explained enhancing method for durability of concrete like this. And also selecting these countermeasures adequately at the design stage leads to reduction of life cycle cost of concrete structures. Uh, I finished my presentation. Uh, I'm sorry for exceeding time. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have one question from the audience, but uh, I would like to have the question and uh, a discussion a time after the next presentation. So uh, I would like to move the next presenter. Uh, Dr. Yamada, could you could share the screen of CB, Dr. Wancha? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, next presenter is Dr. Wan Chai, uh, Professor uh, Hassad University, uh, Department of Civil Engineering. He obtained the de bachelor degree at uh, Hassad University, but after that, uh, he moved to the Japan and then she got, he got the degree, master and doctor degrees at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. And then his major is repair and maintenance of the concrete structure. This is completely fitting with this seminar contents. And then we got some awards uh, in Thailand. And then uh, I would like uh, Dr. Wanchai to present uh, your uh, lecture to us. So could you please start? Thank you very much for your uh, introduction. I would like to share my slide. Okay, we can see well. Okay. Okay, let me start uh, my presentation. Uh, the topic is uh, Thai standard for collide attack. Uh, this, the first one of the standard is about I'm so sorry, I cannot see my whole slide because of the screen of the Zoom. It's blocked my slide. Uh, From our side, we can see your slide. Yeah. Okay, the first standard is uh, standard number DPT number 1332.55. It's about uh, so sorry. Uh, okay, uh, it's a standard for concrete work by considering durability and service life. Uh, this standard issued by Department of Public Works and Town and country planning uh, on year uh, 2012. Uh, in Thailand, we don't have uh, the specific standard for only coli attack, but we have the standard uh, all over about the uh, durability problem. And this standard, we have uh, eight part. And for the coli part, uh, it uh, contained in part four is about the specification for design by considering uh, the durability. And within this part, we have uh, the specif specification for minimum covering, maximum water cement ratio, allowable crack width, and also we have allowable coli content. And also in part five, we have also uh, said about coral, uh, it's about design by considering corrosion. And in 
this part we have two corrosion uh, corrosion by chloride and corrosion by carbonation uh, next one i would like uh, to explain uh, in the detail uh, it is about the allowable chloride content in concrete mix uh, proportion uh, in this allowable chloride content uh, is up to the construction type for the precess concrete we have allowable chloride content uh, only 0.08 cell, cell uh, percent by weight of binder for the uh, type of structure rc when using contact chloride directly example c retaining wall we have a allowable chloride content 0.2 percent for the RC using in dry condition, uh, we have allowable chloride content 1%, and other RC is 0.3%. Uh, the next one is about part five. It's about the design by considering corrosion. Uh, concrete structure must be designed for chloride content reinforced uh, reinforcement is not over than the chloride threshold value for, design, for the design period of the repair-free service life. It means that the chloride content at the surface have to lower than the chloride content limitation. And we decide by using the fixed uh, equation. For the chloride limit, limit value or the critical chloride content uh, we set up uh, the they set up in the standard that uh, depend on the type of binder if the binder is only cement uh, the critical chloride content is 0 0.45 by weight of binder and for the cement mixed with limestone uh, is same uh, equal to 0 0.45 percent by weight of binder and in case of cement mixed with fry ash so we have uh, depend on the percentage of fly ash in the binder. For the chloride contact at concrete surface, uh, it's up to the required service life uh, in 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 years, and up to the zone, at splash zone, and at uh, depend on the distance of the cross line. So we have the chloride content at concrete surface, uh, uh, from this table. And we have the second standard that uh, have about the chloride uh, attack. Uh, the standard is the standard number 1920 uh, slash 62. Uh, it, stand, it is the standard for inspection, assessment, repair, and strengthening of existing and deteriorate structure, and also from the Department of Public Work and Child and Country Planning. Uh, within this standard, uh, where is the chloride is the part four, is about the inspection. Uh, within the inspection, in the detailed inspection, we have the chloride, uh, we have the detailed inspection for assessment performance of structure con considering service life and durability. And within this section, we have the chloride induced corrosion. And another part, is uh, the, the, the part six, uh, the part five is about the assessment. Uh, so we have service life and durability. And uh, within this part, we have chloride induced corrosion. And the part six is about the maintenance. Uh, within the maintenance for service life and durability, we have chloride induced corrosion in this part. Uh, for the detailed inspection for assessment, of performance of concrete structure considering service life and durability. Uh, we have four phases of deterioration of chloride induced corrosion. Uh, in this standard, separate in four phases. The first one is uh, the initial period. The second one is propagation period. The third one is acceleration period. And the last one is deterioration period. And for the service life and durability, we have a level of chloride induced deterioration. And this one is uh, this level of deterioration. Uh, we 
I, uh, we have the reference from the Asian Concrete Federation. Uh, we have level one, 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 two, uh, two, one, two, two, and three. The one, one is the, uh, the meaning is the duration is no damage and coli content at reinforcement surface is lower than the critical value. And for example, in case of the level three, we have a severe crack and large crack width and severe rust stain and more concrete surface falling and increase in deflection and structure movement. Uh, this one is the path of uh, uh, 5.3. The next one, uh, within uh, this standard, uh, they, uh, the DPT also have the guideline for inspection and assessment of building structure also with the same stand, uh, with the same with this standard we have uh, the guideline together and the guideline in part three we have chemical evaluation uh, that is the coli content in concrete evaluation and we have a coli content evaluation we have test method criteria for coli in fresh concrete and criteria for coli in concrete structure. And in part four, we have assessment criteria for damage level and damage level for concrete structure deteriorate by the coli induced corrosion. For the test method of the coli, uh, we, we test the coli content in the structure by, uh, we use the concrete calling from the structure. And this one, we, we done follow the ASCMC 42. And for the coli content, for, uh, we done uh, follow the ASMC 1152. And for the allowable coli content uh, in concrete smic proportion, we follow the DPT 1332 slash 55 that I already explained. And for the critical coli content, uh, we follow uh, the DPT uh, 1332.55 also. Uh, in the path of 5.3, damage level for concrete structure deteriorate by the coli induced corrosion. Uh, we have uh, the damage level, five level, level one, until level five and each level we have criteria. And in this, uh, in, at this level of damage, we have method for evaluation method. For example, if you uh, structure is in level one, uh, the criteria is coli content is lower than the critical coli content. And for the evaluation method, we use the coli calling and the coli content evaluation. For example, in level two, uh, we have criteria that at level two of damage, coli content reached the critical value. However, the corrosion possibility is still low and the coli potential is more than uh, minus three, uh, 350 millivolt. And for the evaluation method, we use the coli content evaluation and the half cell potential evaluation. And for example, if uh, the structure is in level five, uh, the criteria of level five is a severe loss of cross section and really dangerous for load carrying. Therefore, the evaluation method for the structure, we use structural analysis and repair cost evaluation. Uh, uh, that's all of uh, my uh, some summary of the current uh, Thai standard for the coli attack. And I would like to show you the second topic of my presentation is about the relationship between concrete conductivity and coli content. Uh, this is uh, my uh, study of my previous uh, master student. Uh, it's a, a little study about the relationship between concrete conductivity and coli content. Uh, for the background, Everyone know that corrosion is a significant problem in reinforced concrete structure. Uh, inspection and evaluation are important for maintenance of concrete structure. And the objective of our study is to evaluate the relationship between the corrosion potential, corrosion current, and the concrete conductivity. And the second one is to evaluate the relationship 
between the concrete conductivity and chloride content in concrete. And the scope of our study, we have six types of concrete. Uh, we have six categories of concrete. And the composite strength is uh, 260 uh, kilograms per square centimeter. And water similarly show equal to 0 0.58. And we have two category of corrosion acceleration that is wet dry cycle and in place voltage method. And for the mixed proportion uh, show in this table, we have uh, the SPC, the high early strength concrete, and we have uh, SPC, the sun resistant concrete, and we have fly ash concrete. And in number three, number four, we have bus furnace slag concrete. Number five, we have geopolymer concrete. And number six, we have uh, glass fiber reinforced concrete. We put the glass fiber in the concrete for the number six. And this is our specimen. The dimension is 115 by 280 by 150 millimeter. And we have the uh, chloride, uh, sodium chloride solution uh, container uh, top of the our specimen, and we have three of uh, the steel reinforcement T three reinforcement here. Uh, for the wet uh, dry cycle, uh, after we kill for one hundred day and dry for three days, we have the first uh, measurement for the uh, corrosion potential and corrosion current. And after wet for Friday and dry for two days, this is one circle. We have a second measurement and we uh, continue to uh, 245 days. For the impasse current method, uh, we kill the concrete for 100 days and three days dry. And seven, uh, after that, we have the first measurement and we have a voltage in place. Uh, continuous for seven day and second measurement here. And after that, we leave the 49th day and every week, every seven day, we have the measurement of the chloride, uh, corrosion, uh, corrosion current and the uh, corrosion uh, voltage. And we measure for the half cell potential uh, at three point at the side of the specimen like this one. And for the corrosion current, we measure the voltage between the uh, resistance 100 ohm, and after that, we calculate for the corrosion current. And also, we have uh, measured the conductivity uh, followed by the ASO uh, number 3T, number 358 uh, slash 15. And we have four probes of the uh, con uh, resist resistivity of concrete measurement. And after finish all the measurement, we uh, uh, we measure the chloride content in the concrete. And for the result, uh, the first one uh, is the relationship between the conductivity and the half cell potential. So we can see the relationship between the concrete conductivity and the half cell potential. And if we compare between the wet dry corrosion acceleration and the uh, in place voltage, we can see that the wet dry corrosion acceleration uh, made the concrete having the higher conductivity than the in place voltage uh, method. For the uh, relationship between the conductivity and corrosion current. So we have the relationship between conduct concrete conductivity uh, and the corrosion current. And if we compare between uh, the wet dye method, wet dye cycle method and in place current method, we can see that the wet dye corrosion acceleration made the concrete having higher the conductivity than the in place uh, voltage corrosion acceleration. And this figure, uh, this graph show the relationship between the chloride content and the half cell potential. And for the left hand side graph, it is uh, the depth of the chloride content from zero to 10 millimeter from the surface. And the right hand side is uh, 
the depth of the chloride content for 10 to 20 millimeter from the concrete surface. And we can see that there is a relationship between the chloride content and the half cell potential. And the wet dry chloride, uh, wet, wet dry corrosion acceleration made the concrete having the higher chloride content, uh, 0 to 1 millimeter from surface than the impressed current corrosion acceleration. And also, uh, this graph uh, show the relationship between chloride content and the corrosion current. Uh, uh, we can see the relationship between the chloride content and the corrosion current. Uh, there is a relationship between the chloride content and the corrosion current, and the wet dye uh, corrosion acceleration made the concrete have the higher chloride content, uh, zero to 10 millimeter from surface than the impressed current corrosion acceleration. So I would like to have the conclusion that the higher the concrete conductivity is the lower uh, half cell potential and the higher the corrosion current. The wet dry corrosion acceleration made the concrete having the higher conductivity than the impressed current corrosion acceleration. And the wet dry corrosion acceleration made the concrete having the higher chloride content at near surface than the impressed current uh, corrosion acceleration. I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention and finish my presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Van Chai. Uh, so uh, we, had, we had two presentations. From now, uh, we would like to move to the discussion time. So firstly, uh, some message is, uh, question is given from the audience. So first one, the Wajat Hat Nasa. Uh, maybe the question to the Dr. Koike. Uh, he or she asked, what about the large concrete cover below neutral axis? So if cover depth is large, I don't know, car concrete cover is large, structure is okay or not? So some uh, Dr. Koike or even Dr. Bancha is okay. So can you answer some question from audience? Dr. Koike. すみません、ちょっと質問が見つからなくて。はい、あの、チャットにあって、インデックス。ちょっと前のやつで。what about the large concrete cover below neutral axis? かぶりが大きいときに中立軸よりも小さいところでかぶりが大きいのは構造的に問題ないかっていう質問です。すみません、もう一度お願いします。えっと、かぶりが大きい場合、中立軸よりも下でかぶりが大きい場合に構造的に
And as a question is also same, same one in this experiment. In this experiment. Um, this is to, to the doctor one child. Uh, I don't know what experiments I forgot, but uh, Dr. Wanchai, can you check the experiment? Yeah, experiment in the presentation number two. Uh, this is a question to the Dr. Wanchai. Uh, effect of gravity uh, was asked from audience. Spreading. Yeah, what uh, question? Yeah, what yeah. is the effect of gravity? Splashing of water is not same. I see. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, splashing of water is not same as the pool effect of the gravity. Yeah, I, I, I understand. This is, uh, I did not consider about the splashing gravi gravity. I just uh, would like to see uh, if the chloride have been in the concrete. It seems to be pleased. So, I I think he's disconnected. I, uh, I will contact him. <laughs> okay. Uh, later answer again. So next one is uh from the Kumamoto University. Uh, Doctor Koike. Uh, yep. Doctor Wanchai, can you hear me? So. You, you are. So sorry, my, my internet. Can, can you answer again? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, finally, we could not uh, listen to your answer well. So can you answer again? Okay. okay, so sorry. Because our scope of work uh, consider about the relationship between the chloride content and the concrete conductivity. And we use this method to uh, find the how how many uh, chloride content how how the relationship between the chloride content and the concrete conductivity. Therefore, we did not consider about the uh, splash of the water. Uh, it's not uh, it's not stand for the real the real mechanism that the, they have the chloride will splash into the structure. And this one, the chloride will. Uh, Emerge, emerge from top on uh, of the specimen. So I understand the question. It's better to to study in, in the real situation, the real real mechanism. But in this case, we have the scope of work like this one. This is okay. my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Probably it is a main the main mechanical diffusion, right? That's yes. why yeah, concentration gradient would be more important. Yes. Okay. Next one is uh, Dr. Koike. Which alternative is better to prevent repair of a corrosive structure? So, uh, uh, economic uh, aspect. Economic aspect. Ah, okay, I have uh, example of initial cost and uh, uh, life cycle cost. I share presentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is example of uh, life cycle cost calculation. Uh, this is uh, this is not applicable to all cases. Uh, this is only one typical case. Uh, this is a calculation of initial cost. Uh, this graph shows uh, ratio of initial cost in each type of steel bar, uh, normal carbon steel. Uh, epoxy coated bar, uh, stainless steel type one, 
and type 2. Here, uh, initial cost of normal carbon steel is set at 1, and the, the other is the ratio of normal carbon steel. Uh, in this graph, uh, if the cost of uh, stainless steel bar is five times as uh, normal carbon steel, uh, total initial cost increase uh, up by about 20%. And the uh, life cycle, calculation of uh, life cycle cost, uh, this uh, graph shows the change in the ratio of life cycle cost in each steel bar and each repair works. Uh, surface coating from initial uh, custody protection from 10 years, uh, cross sectional repair uh, for, from 25 years. Here, yeah, uh, initial cost for normal carbon steel is set at one, and other, uh, others are ratio of initial cost of normal carbon steel. Uh, the life cycle cost of high durable steel bars. Uh, will be more economical than uh, each repair works after 25 years. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so probably, of course, the initial cost is large. It could be more durable, but uh, it depends on the owner's decision, but the durable one could be better. Okay, yes. so. Next, it's uh, also uh, Dr. Koike, but I would like to uh, uh, ask Dr. Wanchai uh, from one uh, question from Japan. Uh, can you see Dr. Wanchai's question from Tadasan? Tadasan? Yeah, question about the deep. DPT standards applicable to other structures, such as highway or airport. So this one is uh, applicable to the whole structure or not? Could you please tell us? Yes, okay. Uh, for the first standard that I show, uh, I share the screen. You can see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for this standard, uh, it's uh, for concrete work. By considering durability and service life, uh, this standard is for uh, I think for all type of concrete structure. Uh, so we can apply for uh, for highway for uh, infrastructure. But uh, another standard that I show you the name the name of the standard is for the existing and deteriorate. Uh, actually, it's not structure. It's a Build, uh, in Thai name is building structure. Uh, I'm so sorry that this one, this standard is for the uh, building structure only and the scope of standard is ap apply for the, the building, that rate and existing building in, in Thailand. That's all of my question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my thank, you. thank you for your answer. And the next also uh, from Ondias to the Dr. Koike. In Japanese, I quickly say, Eto, Eto, Imamata no Kenjo, Eto, Shoka Kotaba, the Boshka Sidek, Kotaba, Ichiban Besona, Ano, prediction, Kyoka, Et Kanta Major, Nandi, that is Ichiban, Eto, Ichiban Kazuzan, one, Dinki Boshoko, Tada, Ano, Buzai, Tokasono, Kozobu, no Seti Joko, Tony, え、まあ、その電気防食が適用できない可能性もある。いうので、ま、そういったものも踏まえて、え、ま、電気防食だったり、え、表面皮膚だったり、ま、ひび割り注入などの効果、効を適切に選択すると。そして、ちょっとなく
So it depends on the cost, uh, boundary condition cost and others. So it is uh, not, not easy to answer one countermeasure. It should be flexible. So how about other? Probably uh, all the questions answered, but uh, one question in Thai. So <laughs> Dr. Wanchai, can you <laughs> see? Probably to you. <laughs> uh, no, no. I, actually, so, that that uh, what that what I wrote uh, okay. to uh, <laughs> tell <laughs> the Thai okay. audience. Okay. If they have any question, they send, uh, okay. send it in the chat. Okay, yeah. I understand. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, how about other questions? Okay, so well, if not, probably I would like to move to the next session because uh, probably we also have some. A question time the end of the next session. And then even if uh, next session question time, we, you may ask something to the, even the first presenter, second presenter. OK, anyway, thank you for Dr. Koike and uh, Dr. Banche. OK, so I would like to move to the next session. Uh, next, OK, thank you. Our next presenter is uh, Dr. Uh, Toru Makita uh, from Central uh, Nippon Expressway Company Limited, next to cent Central. Uh, he got bachelor and uh, master degrees from Kyoto University and then moved to the uh, Switzerland to obtain the doctor degree at EPFL. Uh, his major is uh, UHPFRC and then he have some practical experience for the construction maintenance of expressway bridge. So Dr. Makita, could you start your presentation? Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction. So just a moment. So uh, good afternoon. My name is Tor Makita, and I'm an engineer at Central Nippon Expressway Company. It is called Nexco Central. So today I will talk about what we do for rehabilitation and strengthening of bridges damaged by chloride. So in the first of my presentation, I tell you about the current situation concerning bridges in Nexco Central Expressway Network. So this figure shows the Nexco Center Expressway Network. So roughly speaking, we manage. So our headquarter is located in Nagoya here. You know, see here. And roughly speaking, we operate expressways between Tokyo and Nagoya. And expressways between Kanazawa and Nagoya and expressway around or in the Nagoya metropolitan area. So this is a graph showing the expansion of the Nexco Central Expressway Network and its increasing age. 50% of the expressways are put in service for more than 40 years and average age of the expressways is about, about 35 years. In recent years, the growing number of damaged and deteriorated bridges has been seen in our expressway. So these are facts about Nexco Central bridges. Now we manage about 5,000 bridges and reinforced concrete bridges, precious concrete bridges and steel bridges occupy almost the same percentage of our bridge assets. In the early days of expressway construction, reinforced concrete bridges were the most popular choice. But nowadays the precious concrete bridges is a preferred than the other two. So these two are the most common types of bridges in our expressway. One is steel plate gutter bridge and another is reinforced or concrete void slab bridge. And these are relatively new types of the bridges in our expressway. So these, these are the top five factors caused and causing damage on next bridges. 
So the most detrimental is the icing agent. And the second is the traffic load. The traffic load caused fatigue damage on bridge decks. And sea sand was extensively used without removing the chlorides in 1960s and 70s, mainly in the Western part of Japan. The other factors are defective grouting, insufficient concrete cover, and honeycomb in concrete. These pictures show the typical damage observed in Nexco Central bridges. So this uh, figure shows the disintegration of bridge deck concrete due to combined action of water and wheel loading. And yes, this one shows the alkali-silica reaction and this one uh, left below side show the picture shows the fatigue damaged reinforced concrete bridge deck slab. So in order to address the increased number of damaged and deteriorated bridges, we started expressway renewal project in 2015. And in the expressway renewal project, one trillion yen will be spent for over the period of 15 years for renewal of bridges, cut slopes, earthworks, and tunnels. Most of the budget is allocated to upgrading of bridges and it amounts to about 900 billion yen in total. So this table shows the bridge renewal program in the renewal project. Renewal project. So bridge deck replacement is undertaken the most extensively. In the case of a steel plate gutter bridge, RC decks are removed and replaced with precast precious concrete decks. In the case of reinforced concrete hollow slab bridge, uh, deteriorated top surface concrete is removed and the top surface of the slab is rebuilt. As the rebuilding material fiber reinforced concrete is conventionally used. So from this slide forward, I will talk about the rehabilitation and the strengthening of bridges we perform on a routine basis to address chloride related damage. We have our own manuals for design, construction management, and test method. So basically, rehabilitation and strengthening of bridges are designed and undertaken according to these manuals. In order to include new knowledge and up-to-date best practices, these manuals are revised every one to three years. In the following, following I talk about relatively new methods use, used for rehabilitation and strengthening of bridges in our expert space. Firstly, I talk about concrete repair. Concrete repair is one of the most often performed investigation works for bridges. Deteriorated concrete is removed by high pressure water blasting. There are several water blasting methods and when precise removal, removal of concrete is required for, required for example, concrete bridge decks, collision jet water blasting method is often used. used. The collision jet water blasting method uses two flow of water jet colliding and that two flow of water jet collide at a point and at this collide collision point, concrete is blasted and removed. But beyond this collision point, concrete is not blasted and remain intact. So after removing deteriorated concrete, repair materials are applied. This is a, the requirements for repair materials prescribed in the Nexco Center Construction Management Manual, which I previously mentioned. So usually polymer modified cement mortar is used as repair material. But nowadays higher chloride ingress resistance is often required, required for repair materials to minimize life cycle cost of concrete structures. So we use polymer modified cement mortar containing calcium aluminate that is capable of immobilizing chlorides and densifying the microstructure of repair mortar. 
these are uh, chemical formula showing how calcium aluminate immobilize chloride. So in the next slide, I show you how it, work, it works using animation. So at first, free water exists in capillary pores of repair mortar. And, cal and calcium al aluminate react with free water and hydrochalamite is produced in capillary pores. And as the result, as a result, microstructure of repair monitor is densified. Afterwards, chloride ions enter the repair monitor and hydrochloride react with chlorides and Friedel's salt is formed, which means chlorides, chlorides are immobilized and further dens densification of the microstructure occurs. So to summarize, uh, formation of hydrochloride and Friedel's salt densify the microstructure of repair mortar, eventually bringing about decrease of chloride diffusion coefficient and the formation of Friedel's salt decreases water soluble chloride ions available for corrosion and eventually inhibit steel river corrosion. Another method used to address uh, chloride related damage of concrete structure is cathodic protection. There are two different types of cathodic protection system. One is impressed current cathodic system and another is galvanic cathodic protection system. Since more maintenance effort is necessary for impressed current cathodic protection system to be, operate, to be operated, galvanic cathodic protection system is preferred in our maintenance. So conventional zinc sheet anode is applied on the surface of concrete, concrete structures in galvanic cathodic protection system. But because its surface is covered by zinc surface, so cover of just concrete structure is, sorry, surface is of concrete surface is covered by zinc sheet anode, it is not possible to visually inspect the concrete structures. In order to make the visual inspection possible, a new, new galvanic cathodic protection system using zinc strip anode was developed. In this system, zinc strip anode is discreetly applied on the surface of concrete structures and the entire surface of concrete structure is not covered by zinc anode. So it is possible to visually check the condition of concrete structure. The standard weight of the zinc strip is about five kilograms. So this method is easily installed by single person. Management of post-tension concrete bridges is one of the biggest challenges in Nexco Center's expressway operation. Among several maintenance activities needed to be done for management of post-tension concrete bridges, Today, I will talk about repair grouting. It is said that post-tension concrete bridges constructed prior to 2002 in Japan have voids in the ducts with high probability because the grout material used, used had poor performance such as large bleeding and specification and installation practices of grouting, grouting were inadequate. In order to prevent Further ingress of the deleterious materials such as chlorides, repair grouting is quite important. But there are, there are some challenges in repair grouting. In order to inject repair grout, it is necessary to open grout inlets by drilling holes. But it causes the section loss of concrete members and sea stacks. And during drilling holes, steel levers and tenders might be damaged. And after finishing repair grouting, we need to check if the voids are fully filled with repair grout, but it is very difficult. In order to address these challenges, new repair grouting method was developed. So in the new method, grout inlet opening was made smaller to decrease the section loss of concrete members and sea stacks. In conventional ducts, in, in conventional methods, two 25 millimeter diameter hole was drilled for grout inlet. But in the new method, hole size was reduced to 15.5 millimeter and it is about 40% smaller than conventional method. 
and to prevent damaging of steel rivers and tendons, automatic shut-off drill is used in the new method. There are two shut-off mechanisms. If the drill touches a metallic elements, electric current of electric motor, motor driving the drill rapidly increase, and when the electric current exceeds the threshold value, the drill stops. Another shut-off mechanism is functioned by metal detection sensor installed on cooling water tube. If metallic duct is mixed into recover the drill cooling water, the metal detection center react to the metallic dust and the drill stops. To make sure that all the voids are fully filled with repair grout, instead of improving void detection methods, the method to estimate void volume in the ducts was improved. This method uses vacuum pump and volume of voids is estimated by using simple equation based on ideal gas law. So even if all the system is not sealed and there is leakage of air, the P3 pressure of container immediately after opening of control valve one is estimated from a fitted line of measured pressure of the container. And by using this equation, V2, the volume of void is calculated. Grout material was also improved. The fillability of grout was enhanced, enhanced by making its viscosity very low, very low. And in order to improve the corrosion protection performance of grout, calcium aluminate was added, like which is uh, we used for concrete repair material. So in the last part of my presentation, I would like to talk about rehabilitation and strengthening method of corroded steel members. Conventionally, we used, to, we used to use steel plates for rehabilitation and strengthening of corroded steel members, but it was very labor intensive and scaffolding was necessary to install steel plates. In order to make rehabilitation and strengthening of works of corroded steel members more simple and easy, a method using carbon fiber reinforced polymer, CFRP, was developed. So materials used in this method is light and are light, and one person is enough to undertake the intervention work. CFRP can be applied to steel members subject to tension compression and shear. High elastic modulus carbon fiber is used in the CFRP because it is effective for lowering stresses of steel members and improving load carrying capacity of steel members. You can apply 35 layers of carbon fiber fabric at a maximum. And after determine, determining the steel member thickness to be recovered, the necessary number of carbon fiber fabric layer is calculated by using this equation. One of the characteristics of this method is the application of low elastic modulus polyurea putty between steel members and carbon fiber fabrics. If the polyurea putty is not applied, delamination of shear therapy occurs at the early stage of the loading. By applying the polyurea putty, distribution of force from steel member to CFRP gradually decreases as applied force increases. This behavior is taken into account by introducing stress reduction factor in the equation. Yes, this equation as Xian to calculate the necessary number of carbon fiber fabric layer. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your time and kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Makita, uh, to introduce state of art uh, rehabilitation strength and of bleach in the next. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, later, uh, we will have the discussion time. So I would like to move to the next presenter. Uh, I have Dr. Skid to its uh, absent now. So I would like to ask uh, Dr. Amisa uh, Kobayashi uh, before uh, Dr. Skit. So, uh, 
は、say I would like to introduce Mr. Kobayashi,、uh, Sato, Satoru Kobayashi.、Uh, he, now he is a senior research engineer in the Kajima Technical Research Institute.、Uh, he got、um, bachelor and master degrees from Hiroshima University. And then his major is a high performance concrete and green concrete, non concrete and durability of concrete. And then he has a, a, a practical construction supervision at Oitagawa Dam in Japan. And then he also had、uh, more, many、uh, patents as shown here. So,、uh, Mr. Kobayashi, could you please start your presentation? Thank you for your introduction. Please. Wait a minute. Okay, we can see your presentation. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Satoru Kobayashi. I'm an engineer at Kajima Corporation, Japan. So,、uh, I'd like to make a presentation about a concrete durability enhancing technique using mixed silan and shock sand water repellent agent. So, this is the flow of my presentation. First,、uh, I'd like to talk about induction and、uh, general description of Shiran and Shokisan water repellent agent. Then,、uh, introduce exposure test in chloride ion attack、uh, from environment and exposure test in environments with combined、uh, degra degradation by freezing and thawing and chloride ion attack. So, last, finally, so I'd like to talk about the summary. First of all, introduction. So, this is the damage situation of the concrete structure due to chloride attack. Chloride ions from the sea penetrate into the concrete, right? And corrosion of the river occurred,、uh, and the cover concrete falls down. The most important thing to prevent this kind of deterioration is to decrease the penetration of chloride ion into the concrete. So, another one this is a damage situation of the concrete structure due to alkali silica reaction. So, when aggregates containing reactive minerals are used, Such cracks like this, cracks will occur. The most important thing to prevent this deterioration is to decrease the penetration of water. So, finally, this is the damage situation of concrete structure due to freezing and sawing.、Uh, you can see the snow like this. Also, it's not a problem in Thailand. But in cold regions, the water、uh, in the concrete will freeze and so repeatedly. The covering,、uh, covering concrete will pop out or fall, fall off. So also, to prevent freezing,、uh, of the load, freezing of the load, snow melting agent is used. But it contains sodium chloride and it makes the river corroded. The important thing to prevent this deterioration is to decrease the penetration of water and chloride ion. Sorry. From here, I'd like to talk about the solution. First of all, it's an introduction of Shiran and Shokisan water repellent agent. So, this is a water repellent agent. So, this is a water repellent agent. It's a paste type and it's easy to apply using a roller or spray. So, this is a situation of spraying like this. 
it can be used for the concrete of existing and new constructions both. And it's very easy to apply. So why is shiran and shoksan better than any other materials? So this is a shiran type. This is an image of a shiran type water dependent agent. Yeah, this is a shiran. So after applying uh, this type of water dependent agent, shiran is easy to evaporate. So it's difficult to remain surface of the concrete. So shiran forms low density the water dependent layer like this. On the other hand, so uh, this is a shiran shirokusan type. Shirokusan type is difficult difficult to evaporate. So it's it it can remain on the surface of the concrete but it's difficult to, to penetrate into the concrete. So the water repellent layer becomes thin like this. This is a combination type of Shiran and Shoksan, like this. So after applying this type of water repellent agent, so Shiran is easy to Paint rate and shoksan is difficult to evaporate. So, and forms a thick, very thick and high density water repellent layer like this. So, it's uh, so why is shiran and shoksan better than any other materials? That is the answer. So, this is an image of water repellent layer network. Also, water penetration is prevented like this. Vapor can pass through the surface of concrete. Yeah, this is a strong point of this material. This is a water repellent situation like this. So situation of water repulsion and water repellent layer like this, this white portion is a water repellent layer. The water repellent layer is about four millimeter to six millimeter. This water repellent layer prevents the penetration of water and chloride ions. The durability of concrete is increasing. Of concrete improves, it can decrease the deterioration of chloride attack, freezing and sawing, and alkalicidic reaction. Generally speaking, using water dependent agent improves the durability of concrete. And everybody knows that. And there are so many materials uh, and we can easy to buy and we can easy to apply this kind of materials. But in fact, there are many data to prove the effect. However, it's true that the data about how long that this effect last is not enough. So we conduct the exposure test and the actual circumstances and check the long-term durability. From now, I will explain the exposure test. First of all, uh, we exposed the specimens to a chloride attack environment. The site for the exposure test is the coast of Okayama Prefecture in Japan. So here is Okayama Prefecture. And the specimen were set up like a photo like this. On the footing of the bridge pier near the sea. So this is a satellite on the sea. So this is a point of the exposure test near the sea and we prepare the plastic box and cover cover net and we protect the specimen top of the footing and this area uh, is splash zone so sometimes the specimen will wet and sometimes the specimen will dry 
there are properties of materials and concrete mixed proportions used for the exposure test. Cement type is ordinary Portland cement, and water cement ratio is 55%, and target slump is 80 centimeters. This is the physical appearance after 10 years of exposure. I spray the water and check the water repellent condition. So, right, right, right specimen is without water repellent agent. After spraying water, the specimen absorbed water immediately. So, left one is without, with, with water repellent agent. After spraying, well, water, a little water drips from the surface, but water can absorb by the specimen. As a result, water dependent condition can be confirmed until two years of exposure, and it could not be confirmed after four years of exposure like this. This is a measurement result of the depth of the water dependent layer. Horizontal is exposure year, vertical is depth of the water dependent uh, water dependent layer, depth of the water dependent layer. Even after 10 years of exposure, the depth of the water dependent layer was confirmed to be 2.5 millimeter. Also, there is no, there's not on the decreasing trend in the depth of the water dependent layer. In, in other words, even though the water repellent condition could not be confirmed uh, like before, uh, but condition could not be confirmed, but the water repellent layer is existing like this and inside the concrete, absolutely. This is a measurement result of carbonation depths the uh, horizontal ex is exposure year and depth, uh, vertical is uh, carbonation depth. It was confirmed that the speed of carbonation of the specimen coated with the water dependent agent was faster. Uh, blue one is with the water dependent agent, was faster than specimen not coated. Because the water dependent agent prevents the penetration of water, the inside of the concrete is in a dry situation and carbon, carbon dioxide can pass through the water dependent layer. So it is considered that the situation of concrete becomes easy to carbonate like this. This is the result of penetration, penetration depth of chloride ion. You know, vertical is the depth of the surface particle is amount of cried ion. So white one, what is without magical, uh, without water dependent agent, black is with water dependent agent. And two years, four, two years, four years, eight years exposure. You can see that it is confirmed that the water, called, uh, water and containing chloride ion was prevented from penetrating into concrete by the water repellent layer like this. Also, we found that the effect is still working after eight years of exposure. From now, uh, I'd, like to I'd like to introduce another exposure test. This was conducted in the place that the combined deterioration of breathing and sewing and chloride attack will occur. The site of the exposure test is near the coast of Hokkaido. This Hokkaido, here is Hokkaido. So, and it's snowing heavily like this in the winter. Uh, like a photo, thus both freezing and sewing and chloride attack will occur. This is a situation of the exposure test like this. There are 
properties of materials and concrete mixed proportions used for the exposure test. Cement type is ordinary Portland cement. And water cement ratio is 44.3%. Target slump is eight. This is a physical appearance of the specimen after seven years of exposure. I sprayed water and confirmed the water repellent condition. It is the same as the exposure test and as a chloride attack environment. Without water repellent agent, after spraying, after spraying water, the specimen absorbed water immediately. With water repellent agent like this, after spraying water, a little water drips from the surface, but water absorbed by the specimen. The low water repellent effect was slightly confirmed after two years of exposure, but after four years of exposure, the water repellent effect disappeared. This is the result of the density of the specimen. The results are completely different depending on whether the specimens are coated by the water repellent agent or not. Diagonal line like this is with water repellent agent. Blue is without water repellent agent. It was confirmed that the density of the specimen with the water repellent agent uh, becomes lower than the one without it, look at this. Because the water repellent agent can prevent water penetration. From the result, it's obvious that the water repellent agent is preventing the penetration of water into the concrete for a long time. So horizontal is the exposure year. Yeah, this is the seven years after exposure test. This is the result, test result of the depth of the water repellent layer. Horizontal is exposure E, vertical is depth of the water repellent layer. Appro approximately more than five millimeter of the water repellent layer was confirmed until seven years of exposure. There was not on a decreasing trend and the depth of the water repellent area until seven years of exposure. And this is the result of carbonation depth. It's the same result as the exposure test and the chloride attack environment. The water repellent agent is not effective against carbonation like this. The carbonation depth is bigger than without water repellent agent. However, it is said that if the humidity in the concrete is lower than 40%, the possibility of the corrosion of river is low. So I'd like to check the carbonation of existing concrete structure, which is used the water repellent agent in the near future. So this is the result, this result of the penetration depth of chloride ion. White is without water repellent agent. Black is with water repellent agent. One year, four year, seven years exposure. In the case of the specimen not using water repellent agent, the amount of chloride ion surface of the concrete is considerably high after seven years of exposure. But it is hardly confirmed that the penetration of the chloride ion into the concrete coated by the water repellent layer, like this. It is a summary. As a result of the exposure test, it was confirmed that the water repellent layer was remaining even after 10 or 10 years exposure. And it is maintaining high resistance against the penetration of water and the chloride ion. It's not so effective against carbonation, but I'd like to evaporate, evaluate the condition of carbonation through the exposure test continuously. 
Finally, I'd like to check the durability of the existing concrete structure coated by the water repellent agent in the near future. That's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kobayashi. Uh, to introduce the uh, water repellent agent, it is very interesting uh, application. Actually, from this one question is given, but uh, I would like you to answer later. Okay. So uh, I would like to move to the next uh, presenter. So Dr. Skit, uh, are you here? Yes, um, I mean, there's still meeting already. Okay, thank you. So uh, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Skit. Uh, he now uh, belongs to the Department of Highway in Thailand. And then uh, he got bachelor degree at Kassat University, then moved to the Australia uh, to obtain the master and also moved to the USA to obtain the doctor degree. Uh, his major is RC and PC concrete structure, rehabilitation structures, and also numerical simulation, uh, final to FEM and then also bridge and building design and rehabilitation. Uh, she has a very many uh, experience. And then he also have paper and patents. Then he also got some award in the USA and Thailand. So I would like to, uh, I would like Dr. Skit Skit to present your presentation. Okay, thank you so much for a really nice presentation. Uh, let I just open my presentation. Yes, please share Okay, um, thank you so much for giving me the very nice introduction for my um, CV, okay? Um, and thank you so much for everyone to join my session today. I'm going to talk about the challenge and practice for reservation program of DOS bridges, subject to corrosion. Uh, first of all, I'd like to show you this one. It is the uh, the image that I think everyone knows very well is a photo collab of the Taiwan bridges a um, few years ago, okay? Uh, this one is led by us, the result of investigation is related to the corrosion of the cable. And this kind of the damage is no warning. And you can see that after cable has been colored, uh, the area is reduced and if we don't have much uh, enough inspection budget or inspection team, uh, the bridge can be collapsed without warnings, they're very dangerous. So based on that um, recent learned today presentation, I'm going to show you the experience and the future plan and strategy for uh, maintain the bridge, particularly uh, subject to the corrosion. Uh, I'd like to show you guys the overall the highway bridge in Thailand first. And after that, I'm going to show you the, some picture of the corrosion problem. I'll show you some example of the repair work and new bridge construction uh, for mitigation of corrosion. And finally, I'll end up with the future strategy for long life highway bridges. Okay, um, actually, as you can see in pictures, the OS operate longer than 50,000 kilometer length in highway. And that approximately we have uh, 16 to 17,000 uh, bridges, approximately 500 kilometer in length. Um, in the pictures, as you can see that the bridge, you have the, the overall age about 30 years ago. And some bridge is uh, very old, uh, older than 50 years, as you can see. Um, the bridge that we use a lot in Thailand is combination of the short to medium span and some long term span. Uh, this one is the class in place slab bridge. Uh, we use it for shorter span from five meters to 12 meters. Um, the second type of the bridge that we use 
um, for a long time is the tiger, as you can see here. Uh, the span length of the bridge is about 25 meters. Um, the third type of the bridge that we use very often is the eye gutter bridge, as you can see in the pictures and these pictures. That can be rainfall concrete gutter or pre-spread concrete gutters. And it's very cheap bit and we use a lot of uh, cover span from 15 meters to 35 meters, depend on the construction state. Um, the less of the bridge that we use a lot for the medium span is the prank gutters here and the box beam. Uh, both type of the bridge is the same kind of the behavior that we uh, pressing the individual girders uh, and use the chair key and we cast the top slab on the top. Uh, this one is also very quickly for construction. Uh, we use it for 15 meter span and 20 meter span. For the longer length of the bridge, we often use this kind of bridge. You can see is the precast segmental box girder bridge with a maximum span 40 to 45 meters. It was struck by um, erection by launching country that very quickly for, for this method. Another type that we use for the long span is the CIP in place balanced and deliver bridge with maximum span 230 meters. Uh, this one is the um, during uh, erection of the bridges currently is already constructed and open to the traffic. This one is a new Pranaga bridge in Nontaburi. Okay. Um, the next one is the pre straight concrete exodrot bridge. Um, here is the second Thailand Lao friendship bridge uh, in, in Mukdahan with a maximum span of 110 meters. This one we decide the cable of the exodrot to be the symbol between Thai and Laos country. Um, in the future, in near futures, we had to construct the new exodrot bridge is going to construct by using the class in press technology with the spatial concrete um, to be the exodus bridge with maximum span of 250 meters. It's going to construct in Chachong South province. Okay, this is uh, in the future bridge that we're planning to construct. Based on that um, type of the bridge, I'd like to show you some corrosion problem. Basically, um, we can categorize the problem of the bridge, uh, the bridge in the land and the bridge crossing the river. Uh, for the bridge in uh, crossing the land or the short river, um, for the small span type or um, medium span type, usually we found the problem is the corrosion of the substructures. For example, um, these pictures in the left, top left side is a corrosion due to the water leakage from the, the top slab. And after you use the bridge for a long time, the substructure going to have some mi micro crack that can come from the impact load from the top. That micro crack can allow the water penetrate into the concrete very easily. And if we have no corrosion protection, so it caused the corrosion to the substructures. Uh, it, it can form the corrosion damage into that pictures. Another type of the damage due to corrosion in the land bridge is the overpass damage due to the corrosion that show in, in these pictures and in these pictures. This one is similar problem that we found in the trust span bit. Uh, we found the impact load from the top of the superstructures and it's caused some micro cracking. And that micro cracking will uh, subject to the corrosion because uh, we have the problem from the water leakage at the top so that caused the corrosion inside that. And since we have the limit, limit of the inspection budget, so sometime uh, after the few years, the corrosion form and it break the concrete and cause the concrete delamination. So that caused the problem for, for us. So at this time, the bridge, now today we launched the project to uh, repair that bridge for a better and long-term performance. Um, another type of the bridge is the bridge crossing the coastal area or crossing the sea water. Uh, this one is the very famous one, is the Suna Lanon Bridge. Uh, it is constructed uh, in the past using the precast segmental box girders like that. And the pier, they use just the marine concrete. I think in, in that time, they use just the surface resistant concrete, it's not specialized um, coral 
protect protective system concrete. So um, after the three years, uh, after we construct and use the bridge, we found some uh, corrosion problem. Um, we found uh, the crack in its edge around um, the pier, and that is due to the corrosion inside the reinforcement that caused the concrete breakout. Not only the pier that caused the problem, we found the bridge accessories like the bearing gear. In the part, we don't have the technology to use the spatial painting system for, for the pot bearing. We use probably just uh, regular steel and we use some uh, protective uh, coating that not so wrong and not very tough for, for the, the sea waters. So after the few years, let's say seven to 10 years, um, the pot bearing uh, start to form the corrosion like that. So based on that, Example of the corrosion that we found very often in Thailand. I'd like to show you some example of the repair work and uh, projects that we uh, construct the new bridge um, that we use the technology for mitigation of the corrosion problem. Uh, basically, um, when we found some damage like that to the substructures, um, when we we take that the concrete it delaminate and the existing reinforcement uh, form the corrosion and the area of the reinforcement is reduced. If it's reduced not greater than 20% uh, in the cross-section area, we're going to do some very simple methods like we remove the concrete delamination. We perform the epoxy coating to the existing reinforcement and we do the concrete coating, uh, concrete patching. In that way, uh, in the past, we use it a lot because it's simple and very cheap. However, after some research and some knowledge that we transfer from the experts, um, that concrete patching is not that good solution anymore. Because as you can see that after we remove the concrete area from the damaged area, we clean the reinforcement and we coat it by the epoxy in this area and we do the patching with the regular concrete. That's going to form the macro cell corrosion. Um, the existing reinforcement that have some minor reinforcement uh, minor corrosion will turn to be the anode. And after that, the corrosion uh, going to propagate um, more surrounding this area. So the, um, the repair work in this method, it doesn't work anymore. So now today we thinking to use the better repair method. For example, we think about you to, to plan to use the corrosion inhibitor paste. This one we, we try to use in the repair of the minor and the medium span length bridge, because uh, usually in that part of the, of the bridge, we found the corrosion uh, that break the concrete and delaminate concrete. So usually we would like to replace the delaminate concrete with uh, some special chemical product that can help us to uh, mitigate the corrosion in the future. So this uh, type of inhibitor paste going to replace the regular concrete and we do just a simple patching into the damaged area. And that going to uh, help us to make it longer life for the, the small and medium bridge repair. For the longer span, I'd like to show you a solution that we use to solve the corrosion problem um, at the Nestle London Bridge. This one is a picture of the old one. Uh, currently, if you, if you travel to Thailand, you know that going to have the new one construct already parallel to this one, okay? So uh, we we go going to focus on the problem of this one and the solution that we use for the new bridge, okay? Um, the existing non bridge, we found the problem of the corrosion in the pier. Um, when we uh, inspect the bridge in the past, we found that after construct in the few years, uh, the corrosion problem occurred very, often in all the pier of the bridge. For example, this the pie cap, we found the concrete delaminate problem in all the area of the concrete pie cap. After we inspect the level of the, the scene, we found that this pie cap has been constructed in the elevation that's subject to splash zone and the tidal zones, okay? So that's why since the, the area of that concrete is subject to dry and wet condition, it accelerates the corrosion problem to that pier. To eliminate that problem, the new bridge construction for Tedasun Lanon, we try to use the solution of the material and also the protective system like the impressed current cathodic system. 
this is to be designed for the long-term solution. For example, the existing rebar of the pie cap, we install some titanium current distributed bar that is going to serve as uh, one component of the circuit. So um, this uh, titanium mesh is going to form and work as a, a reference electrode. And after we connect the rectifiers, it is the DC power supply to connect between the reinforcement and that titanium based. It's going to, to form the some, some form of the cationic reaction. So based on that, we're going to help the existing rain bar no more sub, subject to the corrosion problem. And usually when we decide um, the potentials and voltage of this circuit, we usually use the polarization criterion that we give the polarization about 100 millivolts uh, for throughout the pier so that we ensure that no, no more corrosion problem in the pier for this bridge. Uh, not only the protective system of the cathodic protection, we also decide the make design of the special concrete type. In that time, we use the fry ash and silica foam. The fry ash going to help the concrete with the permeability uh, condition. So we try to control no more chloride penetration, not exit 1000 coulomb, so that we ensure that no corrosion problem uh, into that uh, pier. And if you see the mid design and the so corrosive strength results from the three days to 28 days, and you can see that for the three days, the strength of concrete PR is come from uh, about the 426 KC or about 40 MPA, okay? And after 28 days, since we use the silica foam, the strength uh, development of the concrete is uh, go to about 69 megapascal, so very high. And for the lapid chloride perm permeability test, you can see that um, at the seven days, um, they have some permeability permeable uh, chloride intrusion about uh, 1000 coulomb. However, after we increase the strength and let the concrete grow about 38 days, um, the chloride intrusion is reduced to 400 coulomb. So this uh, our achievement in uh, prevent the chloride penetration in the concrete for that bridge. And this is an example of the concrete that we cast in the pier Using that specialized design, big design of the concrete. And you, you can see that we also install that um, cotonic protection system in the reinforcement as well. So this is the combination of the, the solution that we used in the past for the Stella Sulanon bridge, okay? And for the superstructures, um, since we um, to use the precast segmental box cutter that design with the special concrete up to 50 megapascal in the strength. And we know that we, if we use the very high strength concrete, it's going to prevent the collide penetration in the concrete. So for the superstructures of the new bridge, that, that show you on the light side, we use just the regular high strength concrete to construct that. And we chip the precast segmental box together to install in size. So we really did the problem from the collide contamination uh, during the, the shipment and during the construction very well. Um, right now, I think the existing new bridge that we use the combination of the material and cathodic production uh, with the high strength concrete production, uh, it shows superior performance unless we have the problem that uh, the cathodic production now today, they have the local problem. We have someone still, the electric cities uh, and the circuit from the system. So now we, we try to plan to think about the solution that prevent the, the, the steering. Uh, and after, the, after we succeed with that solution, I'm going to show you again in the near future. So uh, based on the lesson learned from the past, from the, um, the corrosion damage, from the, the strategy that we used to construct the bridge crossing the sea waters. I'd like to show you the future strategy that we think to preserve the bridge for the long life uh, of the bridge, okay? Uh, the first one is the, 
Debris Preservation Program. This one we adopt from FSWA from Ashton. Uh, currently, we have debris access management. Um, after we in inspect the bridge to get the bridge condition. We will know which one is going to be the good condition, which one is going to be the fair condition, and which one is going to be very damaged condition. For the good condition bridge, we're going to do the preventive maintenance program, the green colors, that composing of cyclical maintenance and condition-based maintenance. Um, for the cyclical maintenance, for example, we just uh, do the bridge cleaning, we do the flooding, the drainage system, so that we ensure that the the no more water leakage on the top of the bridge, and this help uh, to reduce the damage in the future very well. Uh, however, for the bridge that we found that the condition is in fair condition, for example, they have some small crack um, develop in the in the in the deck and have the small crack develop in the pier, and we uh, inspect that they have some potential to help to suffer from the corrosion. We're going to do the rehabilitation program. For example, we need to use the, remove the concrete delamination and probably we can do some special material patching or we can install some, some simple anode protection or use a special coating to, to uh, enhance the, the bridge performance and ensure it's longer life. However, if some bridge, if we didn't inspect it for a long time, and after we inspect and we found that the bridge is subject to very damaged condition, uh, light is go with, it reduced the area of the structural capacity greater than 50%, for example, uh, we're going to uh, replace the bridge, okay? Because if we strengthening it, it's not uh, good for the economics. So we decide to replacement. So based on that, uh, overall criteria. I'd like to show you more in the technical technique we focus on the corrosion damage, okay? For the bridge in coastal climate and the corrosion risk zone, uh, what we're going to use is we think about to adopt the solution for the material and so the solution of the, um, the water leakage prevention technique. For example, for the material, uh, we use the special design concrete to be the impermeable concrete materials, like hyperformite concrete that mix with the fry ash or silica foam or any other um, chemical product. Uh, for the corrosion resistant reinforcement, for the small to medium span, uh, we think about to use the, some, some kind of the chemical coating to the reinforcement. However, if we think about the longer span or special bridge, they're very expensive. We're going to use the special reinforcement like titanium or aluminum reinforcement, or even the carbon fiber reinforcement is also possible to use in the bridge as well. Um, another possible way that we can think about to use in the in the bridge in coastal uh, climate is the we do the waterproof membrane. And uh, this waterproof membrane or overlay is going to install at the layers between the concrete deck and the superstructures level. So in, in, in that uh, technique, we can prevent the water leakage from the top to the bottom of the bridge, and that can eliminate the corrosion problem in the long, longer time. Uh, not only the waterproof membrane, we think about to use the corrosion resistant stay in place framework. And you will know that if we construct the eye gutter system, the eye gutter bridge, we need to have the frameworks on the top of the eye gutters before we cast the concrete at the top. So if we change that uh, from the regular form work to stay in place, uh, high performance concrete, so we can ensure that no coralline penetration from the bottom to the top. So this one going to help us to preserve the concrete deck for a longer time. Um, another uh, system that we can do is that we ensure the effective drainage system up to the bridge. So this can be done at the design phase. We design a um, special type of the drainage system that no longer water um, contained on the bridge so that we can ensure no more water leakage to the bottom of the bridge. And we need to incorporate the frequent bridge clean and wash in the regular maintenance. Um, for the longer performance, if we have some budget, 
we probably think about to use the external protection method. For example, we can use the concrete anode for the short term protection because the concrete anode is not is not that good for the long term. We probably expect to use up to maybe five years. Together with the spatial painting system, uh, if we use the concrete protective coating together with concrete anode, it can ensure that no more um, collide penetration in the huge amount so that um, the concrete anode can work very well for short period. However, if we think about to preserve the bridge for the longer period, we think about to use the cartonic protection system together with the concrete protective coating. This one we can design uh, for external protection method to preserve the bridge for um, probably longer than 20 years. And that's good for very long span or expensive bridge. Not only the, the, this uh, ethanol product, we can re redesign the bridge using the um, reduction of the bridge joints. For example, we can reduce the expansion joint to the bridge using the continuous bridge. In that way, we can ensure that the bridge is no water rigged. That is the starting point for the corrosion problem protection. Um, the last we use the high performance bridge accessory. For example, we use the materials of the pot bearing that can be constructed by aluminum type uh, material. So it's corrosion free, um, so that we don't need to worry about the corrosion problem anymore. However, in, in that top um, topic that we use for the um, corrosion mitigation, we need to balance between advantage and advantage. For example, we need to think about the high resistance property versus impermeable concrete properties. Or we need to think about the cost during construction versus cost during the maintenance. Or we can think about the life cycle cost of the bridge so that we can know which one is the better solution for us. And we also need to integrate the local problem like the st steering or damage of the bridge to the technical knowledge. Because for example, if we think about to in in install the cathodic protection to the bridge, however, we are able to solve the st steering problem. It's no, no advantage of that method because we're going to lose the system within the few years. So it's going to be very expensive. Based on that concept, I'd like to show you very quickly because I think it's done after, after time, okay? Uh, the solution that I'm going to show you is the, for the new regular bridge, the bridge that we expect to have um, the traffic capacity up to um, 40 to 50 years and with the 75 year lifespan, we're going to use um, not so expensive solution. For example, we design the bridge and construction the new regular bridge using the high performance concrete. Uh, we install the waterproof membrane. We use the precast deck panel to pre prevent the water leakage. We can do some concrete coating to the surface. And if we have the special uh, sufficient budget, we can install the concrete anode for the short to medium term protection, right up to five to seven years. And that is the concrete solution. For the reinforcement solution, for the regular bridge new construction, we can install the reinforcement using the epoxy coated rebar, or we can use galvanized rebar. However, this needs to be uh, supervise the contractor really well because the epoxy coated rebar, we need to make sure the dry condition of the reinforcement during the placement. For the galvanized rebar, we need to ensure that no uh, abrasive problem during the placement of the reinforcement. The last is we can dealing with the joyless bridge design, reduction of the bridge scale. Um, we do some design of the drainage system that very efficiently for water um, leakage problem. We can do the combination of the cast in press solution with the precast system. For the precast system, we can use the higher strength concrete so that we can reduce the corrosion problem. And finally, for the new regular bridge, we can do some painting for, for the bridge accessories. Uh, for the for the longer span bridge, okay. For the longer span bridge that we have more budget. Rather than use just uh, high performance bridge, we're going to use the outer high performance concrete to construct the substructure and superstructure so that we can prevent uh, collide penetration for longer time. And we can do install, uh, not only the 
the anode system. We can install the impressed current system. For example, if we construct the, the new extender bridge with the 250 meter span, that is very expensive bridge. So we need to ensure that there is no more corrosion for the 20 or 50 years. So probably we need to install the impressed current to that bridge. For the reinforcement, we can use the more expensive product like uh, stainless or common fiber rebar or even titanium rebar so that we can ensure the longer life of the bridge. For the accessory of that kind of the bridge, we're going to use the corrosion resistant material bridge accessory like we use the, the stainless steel uh, bearing so that we can ensure that no corrosion to, to that with accessory. Okay, for the repair strategies, excuse me, uh, for existing small bridge or regular bridge, this one we expect to use it uh, up to 50 years for the bridge capacities before we strengthening or be before we widening the bridge. So this type of the existing regular bridge, we do just short to medium term strategy for repair. For example, we do just crack sealing. We do the corrosion inhibiting admixture coating. We do some epoxy coating to the rebar, but we need to control the dry condition. We do some sacrificial anode or regular anode for the short term protection. We can um, do some overlay on the top gap with uh, waterproof membrane so that we can er eliminate the water leakage from the top. And then we can convert the bridge from the expanded joist to the joyless bridge. For example, we can uh, convert the simple support bridge to continuous bridge so that we can reduce the water leakage problem that caused to the uh, corrosion problem. For the long-term strategies for this regular bridge, we perform in addition to the regular method, we're going to install some kind of the special material rebar. For example, we can use the stainless steel or titanium steel. We can incorporate the impressed curling system to the bridge so that we can have the longer life for the regular bridge. Uh, however, this depends on the budget, okay? And um, we, we can do some kind of the corrosion resistant painting system to the bridge accessory. And this one going to help us to uh, help the longer life of the bridge accessory, for example, the bearing. However, if the long term strategy for this type of the bridge is not enough, finally we're going to do bridge replacement. Okay. And for the for the final slides that I'll show you today is the existing spatial long span bridge rehabilitation program. Uh, this one particularly for, for example, the bridge with uh, 50 meter span or longer. For example, stainless uh, steel bridge. If we like to enhance the bridge um, life term, we think about to reserve it for longer than 75 years lifespan. For example, we think about 100 year lifespan. For this one, we're going to incorporate short to medium term strategy and long term strategies. For the short to medium term strategy, we of course we need to seal the crack. We do use the corrosion inhibiting amateurs coating. We need to do some epoxy coating rebar to repair the reinforcement recovery. And for the short term, we can install the sacrificial anode as well. And we install the waterproof membrane to the deck and we improve the drainage system. And we change the bridge to the continuous uh, bridge and reduce some bridge joints. That is the short to medium term strategies of this kind of the spatial bridge. However, if we have the sufficient budget, we can invest for the long-term strategies, right? Every 30 years, okay? Um, we incorporate not only the crack searing, we go into do some cry of the strengthening by using the spatial material rebar, right? Stainless steel, titanium. We can incorporate the impressed current system with the steel proof detail. For example, we protect the steel problem by in, in, embedded, embedded the impressed current system inside the concrete section. 
we can install the solar cell system so that we we can ensure the energy saving for the long longer term using of this uh, solution. We can install the waterproof membrane on the top there or incorporate the new precast deck replacement so that we in incorporate the high strength concrete into substructures. In that way, we can ensure that longer life of the bridge superstructures. And finally, very important, we're going to use the repaint, repainting system to the bridge uh, accessory and incorporate the, the new material system like the bearing. Uh, with the stainless steel material so that we can ensure the longer life of the bridge accessory. Okay, um, that is our presentation that I just prepared for you guys today. I, I know that uh, the strategy is uh, just a conceptual, but we have the new project in the fifth year. So after that, I'm going to show you more in, in detail. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you so much for our audience that attend my session. And if you have any questions, I'm very really welcome to answer that. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sweet. Uh, yeah, thank you for your introduction. You have many uh, practical experience for, uh, for the problem of corrosion. Uh, after our next presenter, we will have the discussion time. So we would like to have some discussion with you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So I would like to move to the final presenter, uh, Dr. Chavis. Yes, I am here. Yeah, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Chavis. Uh, he now belongs to the C Park S&M Lifestyle Solution Company. And then he uh, obtained the whole degree from the King Mok University of Technology, uh, Tombori. And then his uh, major is structural engineering. And then he have some uh, experience of practical structural assessment, repair and protection structure. And then he have, you know, he have many, uh, more than 200 projects for assessment and repairing structure in Thailand. So probably he will present the, his experience, practical experience in the, this presentation. Uh, Dr. Chavez, so would you please start your presentation? Thank you very much for a good time and a very nice, very nice uh, the seminar today. So uh, we are going to start with the uh, uh, CPAC light, SBNM light time solution video clip to introduction hours. So um, may I show you about the screen? And sorry for the Thai language. And we uh, provide the subtitle in English in the under the screen. Please, let's see. ปัจจุบันโครงการก่อสร้างในประเทศไทยทั้งขนาดใหญ่และขนาดเล็กหลายแห่งมีอายุการใช้งานมาอย่างยาวนานทำให้มีโอกาสในการเข้าไปซ่อมแซมบำรุงรักษาเพื่อยืดอายุการใช้งาน c p พ c k Solution ผู้เชี่ยวชาญในการให้บริการงาน Construction Solution แบบครบวงจรได้เล็งเห็นถึงโอกาสในการเข้ามาดูแลโครงสร้างเหล่านี้และเพื่อเร่งให้เกิดการยกระดับมาตรฐานการก่อสร้างซ่อมแซมในประเทศไทยให้เกิดขึ้นได้อย่างรวดเร็วจึงได้ร่วมมือกับโชบอนแอนด์มิสซุยอินฟราสตรักเจอร์แมนเทนเนนซ์คอร์ปอเรชันหรือ SBNM ผู้เชี่ยวชาญด้านการซ่อมแซมบำรุงรักษาเพื่อยืดอายุโครงสร้างระดับโลกของประเทศญี่ปุ่นซึ่งมีประสบการณ์มากกว่า60ปีและมีความโดดเด่นใน3ด้านประกอบด้วย 1. Research and Development โดยมีทีมงานวิจัยและพัฒนามากกว่า500คน 2. Engineering Expert ด้วยองค์ความรู้และประสบการณ์มาอย่างยาวนาน 3. Fire Particle Technology วัสดุศาสตร์ชั้นสูงที่มีคุณสมบัติเหมาะสมกับงานซ่อมแซมโดยเฉพาะโดยมีผลงานที่โดดเด่นมากมายในประเทศญี่ปุ่นอาจเช่น Expressway No. 6งานซ่อมแซมโครงสร้างสะพานขนาดใหญ่ของทางด่วนหมายเลข6
โดยการเสริมกำลังของพื้นฐานด้วยคาร์บอนไฟเบอร์หรือ CFRP และซ่อมแซมความเสียหายของค่าหลักขนาดใหญ่อันเนื่องมาจากการล้าหรือฟัตติกเรเวย์งานซ่อมแซมสะพานรังรถไฟทางภาคตะวันออกของญี่ปุ่นซึ่งเป็นโครงสร้างคอนกรีตอัดแรงขนาดใหญ่หรือ pre-stretch concrete โดยการใช้แร็กชีตปิดพับที่ผิวหน้าของคอนกรีตเพื่อป้องกันการซึมผ่านของน้ำและความชื้นซึ่งเป็นสาเหตุที่ทำให้เกิดรอยร้าวและความเสียหายอื่นๆตามมา coastal area งานซ่อมแซมโครงสร้างสะพานบริเวณชายฝั่งทะเลซึ่งเป็นโครงสร้างคอนกรีตอัดแรงซึ่งมีความเสียหายจากการซึมผ่านของคอรายจากน้าทะเลทำการซ่อมแซมตัวคานเหล็กของสะพานและป้องกันสนิมที่เกิดขึ้นในโครงสร้างด้วยระบบ cathodic protection damper for bridge การติดตั้งอุปกรณ์ต้านทานการสั่นของโครงสร้างหรือ damper เพื่อลดความเสียหายของโครงสร้างเมื่อเกิดแรงสั่นสะเทือนจากแผ่นดินไหวที่โครงสร้างของสะพานที่มีช่วงความยาวต่อเนื่องข้ามแม่น้ำทามะเกียวโตรวมถึงยังได้มีการติดอุปกรณ์โซ่หรือ restraining chain เพื่อป้องกันการร่วงหล่นคานอีกด้วย CPAC Solution และ SBNM จึงได้มีการร่วมมือกันจัดตั้งบริษัท CPAC SBNM Lifetime Solution ที่ให้บริการโซลูชันด้านงานซ่อมแซมบำรุงรักษายืดอายุการใช้งานโครงสร้างแบบครบวงจรโดยใช้เทคโนโลยีระดับโลกและนอกเหนือจากเทคโนโลยีระดับโลกในการซ่อมแซมที่มีแล้ว CPAC SBNM Lifetime Solution ได้ใช้ดิจิทัลเทคโนโลยีเพื่อยกระดับการให้บริการตัวอย่างเช่นโดรนเทคโนโลยีในการสำรวจรอยแตกร้าวในโครงสร้างทั้งแนวราบและแนวสูงควบคู่กับการใช้ BIM เทคโนโลยีในการออกแบบวิเคราะห์และควบคุมงานซ่อมแซมให้มีประสิทธิภาพสูงสุดวันนี้ CPAC SBNM Lifetime Solution พร้อมแล้วที่จะเป็นจุดเริ่มต้นในการส่งมอบคุณค่าที่สำคัญผ่านงานซ่อมแซมบำรุงรักษาโครงสร้างทั้งในด้านอายุการใช้งานที่ยาวนานมากขึ้นด้วยความพอใจในการใช้ 100% รวมถึงระยะเวลาและต้นทุนที่เหมาะสมตามรูปแบบที่คุณสามารถเลือกได้Thank you very much for. Uh, uh, sorry. So, uh, so today I would like to talk about the the topic of example of the coral attack and prospect for future repair method development in Thailand. So um. Uh, so today I I have the uh, about five topic to to talk to you. Uh, first, uh, in introduction and uh, show you about the. Uh, actual, actual effect example of coral attack in Thailand. And uh, next one is the past repair history and lead deterioration. The third one is a repair method adopt this time. So the next one is the possible measure and improvement plans. And the last one is the other Japanese repair method. So uh, this is the introduction of the coli attack. Uh, so uh, maybe we call it as the soil damage in coastal area of Thailand. The photo show the the concrete structure under the port in the downstream area along with the Jiao Phraya River. So we can see the still inside concrete structure is c o l l o t e due to the coli ions, and uh, a piece of concrete is uh, spalling up due to the deterioration. So, uh, so a piece of concrete, I mean the, the thickness layer from surface to still inside as the covering link. So uh, it's not only the port nearby Chao Phraya River, but also there's many coastal area surrounded Thailand to be damaged like this. Another problem as we always seen that some repairing works of Pier structure has already been so done several times by the 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 construct the contractor. Sorry, so repairing mortar was selected to use and apply on the concrete surface in this case. And um, however, uh, the c o r i o n remain inside concrete, and 
the 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 rainfall still inside is still colors continuously. The still will be expand because of increase of surrounded uh, oxide. Then the repairing motor will be cracked again, as shown in the photo, like this. And the uh, root cause of deter deterioration has not been eliminated. It's just the long practice in this end cannot extend lifetime structure. structure. So uh, this is on our repairing project. We selected the, the target structure and start to remove not only concrete surface, but also concrete behind behind the reinforced steel inside. So we need to remove cori on around the reinforcing bar as well as the eliminate the cause of deterioration. So uh, after the, the section repair is complete, the waterproof uh, material is applied on entire uh, surface to uh, prevent the inversion of deterioration factor in the future. On the other hand side, uh, this, this is the core sampling of the existing structure. The internal coli uh, concentration inside this sample was investigation by the electronic, uh, sorry, electronic probe micro analyzer, so we call as EPMA. Then uh, we see the coli distribution here and uh, with the combination of electron microscope. And uh, wavelength techniques. The result would be shown as the, the contour diagram like this. A blue path is indicated the, the low chloride density, while the yellow and the green part indicate that the high chloride density. The surface area in the 20 millimeter, millimeters depth show lower chloride ions because these parts were repaired previously by the contractor before. So on the contrary, the depth uh, over than uh, 30 millimeters as the covering concrete length, it is the high uh, intensity of coli ions uh, around the rebar. Then the corrosion is going to be continued. The possible measure for the future case, uh, which is the spraying method, with the spraying method in the section repair work, a thickness can be sprayed uh, about 30 millimeters with one spray. Uh, additionally, uh, although it's depending on the work condition, theoretical, uh, sorry, the amount of spraying per hour is uh, about uh, 0 0.2 uh, um, square, 0 0.2 cubic meters with our form works. So uh, the time uh, efficiency is very high and the productivity is to be greatly improved. Since this is the expected uh, deteriorate uh, Sorry, uh, deteriorated uh, structure damage by saw damage would be require a large area of section repair. We believe that this spraying method would give us uh, excellent workability and productivity in Thailand. So we hope that uh, um, we would like to uh, introduction another repairing product from Japan. So uh, firstly, we want to show you about the product for preventing deterioration for the reinforced concrete. So we call that the new span guard, TS, is the mean that the Thai Sealy is the silane based effect impregnated material. So the silane based material form a water uh, repairing layer like this on the concrete surface as shown like this, uh, is uh, used to prevent the inversion of uh, water media deterioration factor. This uh, water repairing layer is different from the waterproof coating and uh, it's possible to release the, the inside water to be well performed. 
the special feature for this product is the easy to use with the only liquid material and can be applied with the roller after surface treatment. The water repellent is the sorry. The water repellent. Sorry, sorry. The water repellent layer is able to protect the entry of deteriorating factors such as the water, chloride ions, as well as the, the carbon dioxide. So long lasting effect, uh, our record show more than uh, 30 years at the actual structure after applying the product without repainting. So there is a low risk of the, any deterioration such as crack and spalling. So uh, it's quick drying. So we have improved the material for the climate in Thailand. So uh, we have the mock-up project uh, like this in Thailand also. So uh, it can be dry uh, in within hour, one hour after uh, application at the, the 30 degrees Celsius because it's colorless and uh, transparent. There is no change in appearance. So this is the project different in Japan. The performance, uh, the performance table is of the new Spanka TS based on the method of the Japan Society of Civil Engineer, we call as a JSCE. So uh, the results show that uh, it has a high presentation suspension rate for water, chloride ions, carbon dioxide also comparing with the non-coating concrete specimen. So this is the project reference in Japan to show the product durability more than uh, 30 years. So we confirm that the water repairing layer was still effective. Then we already tried to test mock-up in Thailand also as well as uh, the power structure and uh, somewhere else in train station under construction. So uh, next we would like to introduce the hybrid sheet material or we call as a HB sheet. It is used for prevent the spalling and protection method using a, a laminate adhesive sheet. The uh, corrector of this method are following like this. And uh, so uh, when we apply, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So when, when we apply the, the, the hybrid sheet, uh, it uh, can be uh, particularly uh, excellent protecting performance, preventing an entire of the deteriorating factor such as coli, ion, and carbon dioxide to enter into the, and through the water and moisture. Uh, spalling prevention, uh, comparing with the existing coating method, uh, hybrid sheet with the, with the tensile strength prevent concrete pieces up from the spalling. So, so they are the, the stable quality because of the, the made from the factory. The product is a uh, high performance and quality certainly stable. And uh, in addition, so the uh, it can be used with the CFRP uh, when we apply the the hybrid sheet. No need to remove uh, hybrid sheet when when we use another sheet like the CFRP or it uh, is not required to remove and uh, can be used uh, together in the future. So the, this is some, some project different from Japan. Uh, hybrid sheets what apply on the under, underlying, sorry, underlying uh, the surface of uh, that uh, superstructure to prevent the spalling concrete where it may cause damage to people on, uh, and the uh, car when uh, it's spalling. 
So uh, this is uh, the special feature of the hybrid sheet that we can use. Uh, <clears throat> like this. So uh, another I, 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 I want to say that about the is the term reduction for install this product. In conventional, uh, when we are installing the FRP method, we need to apply the fiber sheet, uh, impregnating uh, process and uh, applying uh, weather resisting paint uh, like this. Uh, so uh, the, this is uh, more than three step and uh, integration in, into one, one uh, process by when we use the uh, hybrid sheet. So uh, the working time is reduces around uh, 30 or 40 percent then. So it's, uh, this is our innovation material product in the area of preparing works. So we can show you for the more information. And uh, if you have the, any question, so you can uh, ask uh, me and my team. And thank you for, for showing time. This is of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, introduction, your experience, and also introduction of Japanese technology. And then it also seems to be related to also Mr. Kobayashi's presentation. OK, so uh, thank you for the presenter. And then uh, I would like to move the discussion time. So uh, actually, we already have some questions from audience. Firstly, uh, Mr. Tada, Taba, uh, to Dr. Kobayashi, uh, Dr. Kobayashi, uh, Mr. Kobayashi, did, did you check the question? The question? Yes, already, uh, yes. Could you answer? Yes, uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, so after applying, it takes one day, 24 hours after applying, we have to keep dry condition. So we have to be careful about rain force. So we have to keep dry condition after applying. So if it is laying while applying, we have to apply it again after dry of the concrete. That's all. Is it okay, okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So if so, it probably could be okay. Uh, and another question is probably to the Dr. Skit at the cost issue, Titan Mesh. Dr. Skit, did you check yep. the question? Yeah, for the car comparisons. Uh, that is the good question. Um, the titanium and stainless steel bar is uh, a lot more expensive than the normal regular bars, of course. Um, in some projects, is greater than 10 or 20, 20 times. However, uh, and I, I, I mentioned previously, we're going to uh, balance between the, the life cycle cost of the bridge. For example, uh, we can use the titanium or stainless steel bar just only on the substructures of the long span bridge. We will not use it for any other press or component of the bridge. For example, the superstructures, we use just regular rebar with the high performance concrete. So in that way, we can balance the cost of the special rebar in the projects. OK, thank you. Uh, yes, so that cost balance is very important but difficult issue, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, how about other question or comment from audience? Uh, if by chat is a little bit difficult, you can also speak directly maybe. You have any question, opinion? Or uh, Dr. Chuck, Chuck Brown, do you have some, any comment <laughs> to present our, sorry, Sadan asking. 
Uh, th thank you for all your presentation. Um, I, I think the, the topic is uh, very interesting and especially uh, the strengthening and repair for corrosion in Thailand because uh, we are seeing a lot of problem uh, in Thailand recently because of the, the flood, for example. And um, I, uh, I would like to ask... Uh, Dr. Chawitz about the, 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 the RAC sheet, uh, your product. How, how much is it uh, compared to typical FRP material? All right, thanks for your question. So uh, I think it, it's not the kind of the strengthening material. <laughs> It's used only protect the spalling concrete and uh, protect the moisture and water uh, absorbed penetrated inside the, the concrete layer. So um, I think it's a uh, cheaper than CFRP and uh, easy to use for the installing. Thank you. Oh, I see. Thank you. Um, so you can apply FRP on top of this material. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just good for how about other comment or question? No more. Uh, actually, I have one question to uh, Dr. Makita. So you introduce cathodic protection. State, maybe that is very, uh, seems to be new, new compared to the uh, traditional way. So actually, I'm not sure so how much you installed the such cathodic protection in the rehabilitation, current rehabilitation in the next central expressway. Yes, thank you very much for your question. Actually, we don't apply cathodic this galvanic cathodic protection that much because our maintenance folks always reactive maintenance, so not preventive maintenance. So I think this method is effective for preventive maintenance. Okay, okay. So yes, preventive maintenance is more, you know, I, I think it's uh, more important than doing reactive maintenance because it costs okay. more when we, do reactive maintenance. Okay, thank you. And also I'd like to ask you about the application situation of precast concrete. Mm -hmm. Probably you, how about slab applications? How much percentage precast concrete currently? For replacement or- Replacement, exactly. Uh -huh. So you are, you, are you asking about the cost of precast? No, no, not cost. I mean, the how much percentage on-site cast on cast on site or precast application. Okay, so when we do the replacement of or like this the, or the rainforest concrete deck, yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yes, precast concrete yeah. because we can minimize the the, the traffic disruption as mm -hmm. much as possible. So in that case, we cannot use the in sheet casting method because it takes time for the concrete setting. So normally we use precast precast concrete to take when we replace the deteriorated damaged RC reinforced concrete takes. Okay, thank you. Because uh, also Thailand, you also focus on the application precast concrete. But uh, I'm not sure how much precast is installed in the actual site in the Thailand. Is it, uh, I'm not sure. Now, Japan, is, uh, we all, as you know, we have many old persons and then few young engineers. So that's why uh, application of uh, precast concrete is very high. Uh, high means uh, expected to be high. But in Thailand, I don't know how much you apply the precast concrete. I, I surprised that in the case of next central, they applied the 100% uh, precast concrete for the replacement. 
but uh, in the case of Thailand, do you have so much uh, precast application? Because that could be de de durable for the, even for the chloride attack, I think. Can you have some, any? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I can answer this question for you. Oh, thank you. Um, basically, um, in the bridge system, we will try to utilize the precast system. However, it's not 100% to our components. For example, we use the precast for the superstructures, but if we would like to replace the substructures, they have some limitation of technology that we don't use the substructures at the precast. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but if the precast, going to use for the replacement of superstructures. Mm -hmm. I definitely confirm that we use uh, almost 100% in Thailand as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, okay, almost time is over. So, Dr. Yamada, how shall we do? I mean, photo session is fast or closing remark from the Dr. Pancha? Um, maybe photo session is first. Okay, so okay. how? Uh, from now, um, if it is possible, uh, please uh, turn on your video, and I will take the uh, take the screenshot on the Zoom as a in a memory commemoration of the this seminar. So please take uh, yeah turn on your video if it is possible. Thank you very much, everybody. So I will take a screenshot. Then one, two, three. Okay. Then once again, I will take a shot photo again. All right. One, two, three. Yeah, thank you very much. Once again, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I can take all the top. Okay, um, uh, anyway. yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. And thank you, thank you for your joining. Uh, finally, I would like uh, Dr. Wan Chai to give the completing remarks for this seminar. Uh, Dr. Wanchak, could you give us completing remarks? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that all of you have well done through this joint seminar. It's my great, it's, it's my great pleasure for me to say a few words at the end of this seminar. I'm, I'm very grateful for that our faculty of engineering having had the opportunity to co-organize this event. This seminar gave the information related to the current situation and maintenance technologies for infrastructure in both of Japan and Thailand, especially for the concrete structure subjected to the collide attack. I hope that this joint seminar is useful for all of the participants or information that we are exchanged today will be very useful for the infrastructure maintenance in both countries. We hope that we will work to keep our infrastructure, infrastructure in good conditions and safe for all our people in both countries. I would like to thank you very much for all speakers that give us very useful information today. Finally, on behalf of the organizer, JSCE and Faculty of Engineering at University. I would like to express my appreciation to all, all, all of the participants for taking time out of your busy duties to attend this joint seminar. I would like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of this joint seminar, wishing uh, that we can have this kind of good activity again. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. So, uh, okay. So, I think it is a very, uh, very fruitful discussion and uh, very wonderful presentation from presenters. So, I very appreciate for you uh, joining and also uh, discussion. So, uh, shall we close?
Dr. Yamada so how finish. And also, as Dr. Yamada announced, if you need a certificate to join the seminar, please uh, uh, you fill the, your information the Google form, OK? Ah, OK, I will announce again. Yes. Now I yes type the on the uh, chat about the uh, information of the e certificate. And please, uh, uh, if you want to want the e certificate, please uh, answer from the uh, this Google form. Thank you for joining today. And the, it's at, at the end of this session, and the, I will make a clap your hands of all presenters and the all participants. Okay. Ah, is it okay? Thank you. By action or? By yes, a reaction, reaction button. Reaction, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So thank you for very much for attention, Andy. Thank you for making an excellent present, an excellent seminar. And I appreciate the Dr. Asamoto and Dr. Wanchai and Dr. Chakrapon and all presenters again and the participants again. Thank you very much for attend attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much.